Hello, uh, welcome to the PRISMAP seminar organized in recognition of the World Cancer Day on the 4th of February. Uh, our speaker is Dr. Thierry Stora, who is a CERN Medicis project leader and PRISMAP coordinator. Uh, Dr. Stora has extensive experience in radioisotope production, and today he will talk about the potential of using mass purification in search for new cancer treatments. The seminar will be followed by a quick Q&A with the questions that we received on the Prisma social media. Now, Thierry, the floor is yours. So thank you, uh, Victoria, for uh, this nice introduction. And uh, indeed, I will uh, uh, give you uh, an introduction on how we are using this isotope mass separation techniques uh, developed uh, at CERN and at Medicis for uh, making uh, extra purifications on radionuclides. And I will tell you first on how these uh, uh, radionuclides are used uh, for uh, uh, cancer treatment. And uh, actually, uh, uh, radionuclides uh, have been used uh, in nuclear medicine for a very long time. And uh, um, actually, uh, radioisotopes and radionuclides, they were first discovered by uh, Madame Curie uh, about 150 50 years ago. Uh, and uh, when actually uh, Madame Curie discovered radium, she uh, very uh, rapidly uh, realized that besides, of course, fundamental uh, uh, consequences in uh, physics and chemistry, this uh, 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 radioactive uh, uh, nuclei would uh, uh, imply, she very rapidly uh, uh, understood that the radioactivity can actually be used to uh, treat and be uh, used for um, people which suffer from cancer. And actually, uh, quite interestingly, we had the visit of uh, uh, some uh, uh, representative of the, the family of Madame Curie long uh, after, and not long ago then, uh, in 2017, when we had the uh, Professor Langevin Joliot, which is actually the, the granddaughter uh, of Marie Curie, and she's uh, a professor in nuclear physics, and uh, then uh, this is uh, showing you actually how uh, indeed we have this bridge between um, development at the very fundamental level in this field of uh, uh, nuclear chemistry and nuclear physics and then uh, its applications then for radionuclides which are uh, uh, else uh, used then uh, uh, in the regularly now in the, in the, the uh, diagnosis or treatment of, of cancer. And uh, the interest in this uh, radionuclides actually uh, not uh, in, a, in a very, uh, I would say, uh, uh, surprising way is indeed as well uh, uh, present at the level of political or, or uh, um, uh, European institutions. And uh, the reason why is that you uh, need uh, quite uh, uh, sophisticated installations uh, to produce radionuclides, which are uh, um, either produced uh, eventually in a um, small particle accelerator, in cyclotrons, or eventually in, uh, in nuclear reactors, uh, mostly in research nuclear reactors. And uh, I will then show you how isotope mass separation, after I've explained how this, this works, can actually be used in combination of this, uh, these two possibilities. So the general public, uh, of course, is uh, when you talk about uh, how we can treat cancer uh, or how we can diagnose uh, them, uh, is of course uh, uh, very interested in, for instance, when we uh, general, um, organize like open days, uh, we have many visitors which are, for instance, coming uh, in this uh, facility uh, that uh, you see uh, here at the entrance uh, of the of the Medicis building. So uh, actually, this uh, uh, field is uh, then uh, um, covered and uh, developed not only uh, at the research level in hospitals, but as well 
uh, is of interest because uh, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical industry, which is then able for some of those to develop new compounds useful again in diagnostics or treatment for cancers, uh, can generate can then first uh, provide absolutely uh, striking results in the healing of. Uh, of uh, cases which normally you would uh, treat with uh, chemotherapy or with external radio uh, therapy, but for uh, so-called radio pharmaceutical, that means a comp which is um, And that uh, at the level of the uh, pharmaceutical industry, there is as well a, a, a strong interest because uh, uh, while um, in cancer treatment, you can have a cure from uh, uh, chemotherapy, from external radiotherapy, or eventually from surgery. Uh, but in certain cases, uh, there has been uh, uh, radiopharmaceuticals, that means uh, a small molecule which then uh, integrate this isotopes, which has been able to uh, uh, provide uh, um, uh, important uh, treatment and breakthrough uh, in some cancer cases. And in this uh, uh, slide, uh, uh, I give you an example on how uh, this can be used and how modern nuclear medicine is using these uh, radionuclides in uh, small molecules. And uh, uh, this is so-called targeted molecular therapy because the, the rationale of using this radiopharmaceutical is that by injection in the bloodstream, uh, you would uh, actually uh, have a labeled uh, compound, can be a small peptide, a sugar, or a fragment of antibody. And uh, this has the capacity then to uh, recognize uh, uh, lesions, cancers, in, uh, in this case, uh, by uh, having a very specific and, uh, and uh, dedicated binding while uh, if uh, the, the cell uh, does not present any uh, cancer uh, characteristics, then uh, your compound will be uh, flowing and will be extracted from the body just from natural ways. And um, this field then uh, has uh, seen a strong um, uh, rise uh, because uh, we have the possibility to find radionuclides which can either uh, emit by radioactivity uh, some photon. I mean, this is uh, light, but this is energetic light, which can be then detected by a specific uh, uh, detectors. And uh, then you can, uh, by emission, for instance, of a positrons, uh, which then can be detected by uh, uh, positron emission tomography type of uh, uh, scanners, then you can uh, have a specific detection of a lesions. And if you would exchange then this uh, radionuclides, uh, which is emitting a positron by another one, which is then emitting a different type of radioactivity, like a beta, alpha, or OG electron particle, uh, then you can uh, have an action by decay directly in the cell nucleus. And then in that case, uh, you would be able to destroy the genetic uh, information, the DNA, and then prevent the proliferation and then destroy very locally uh, the uh, cancer cells and the cancer tissues. Even if you don't precisely localize where this is in the body, uh, if you want, this uh, molecule will be targeting their, their, their uh, targets, their cancer targets uh, by themselves. And so this whole field is called Terranostics for combining therapy and diagnostics and you see uh, immediately the, the potential and the strengths this, uh, this domain in, uh, in radio pharmacy development can, uh, can have. So to um, um, produce and make these uh, uh, radioactive uh, elements or radioactive uh, isotopes, uh, uh, I mentioned Marie Curie. 
but uh, actually the way uh, this is uh, investigated at a very fundamental level in uh, large scale facilities uh, across Europe and, and beyond is by irradiating with an acceptor beam uh, a target material which then you would host in a, in a so-called target and ion source unit which is displayed here for the case for instance of uh, units that we use in, uh, in medicines and by interaction of a proton beam through, uh, through the target material you would be able to create uh, by acceleration and mass separation an isotope uh, beam which is then uh, separated according to the mass over charge uh, uh, ratios that means you you are able to make a selection based on their physical property rather than their chemical properties and all this the process to extract these isotopes is actually a, a complicated uh, process where you combine diffusion throughout the material and a release through um, uh, this uh, structural uh, um, device to uh, direct uh, the uh, evaporated em emanated radionuclide so that you can shape a beam and uh, select it in a, in a dipole magnet according to the Lorentz uh, force. Um, so if you uh, want to have a more, let's say, uh, uh, picturesque uh, description of this process, so if you imagine that the uh, particle beam, uh, as uh, by interaction of uh, target material, uh, has created some radionuclides, then by hitting your target, they, these uh, radionuclides will have the possibility to be released through the power structure of the target within a certain characteristic time. And so they will be evaporated and present, if you want, in uh, this uh, cylindrical oven that we just saw before. And then they will eventually find their way uh, here through this uh, hot cavity, is a tubular cavity of a few centimeters long, uh, which is then connected to the beam line before the dipole magnet. And then by um, uh, interaction of the cavity, you can make a, a chemical selective ionization so that you're accelerating, you're charging the neutral isotope uh, with a little electrical charge and by uh, accelerating this with an electrostatic electrode with a hole, you can pull the charged isotope out and then you can shape them as a beam in the dipole magnet. So that's the, the, the basis of the uh, production, uh, release and acceleration of uh, this isotope to make them as a beam so that you can send that through the disanalyzing magnet and make mass separation. So you can realize that by hitting this target to sometimes 2000 degrees in the vacuum, you can have many processes which are along the way of the release of the isotope so that it's forming this, uh, this uh, beam, which can be used after. And this is uh, not um, uh, fully uh, uniform process and you can imagine that some elements are more volatile like noble uh, gases whereas some elements uh, are very refractory that means they don't get released or evaporate so this mass separation process does not apply uniformly to all uh, chemical elements but there is techniques and ways to eventually release these elements and this uh, isotope so that you can form uh, this beam by this isotope mass separation uh, process. So that is for the, the fundamental uh, understanding on how this is happening. And you immediately see that uh, uh, to make this full um, production and separation of isotopes uh, with this mass separation process, you have basically three different parts. Uh, one part, this is the uh, interaction of an uh, uh, incoming particle beam which needs to interact onto your targets uh, and that can be different type of uh, stable nuclei, eventually it can be enriched uh, nuclei and this is by an interaction um, of your incoming particle beam to this uh, target nucleus that you create different nuclear reactions. 
and uh, the intensity, the quantity that you produce is then driven by the incoming intensity or particle flux and followed by the probability of reaction that we call a cross section. And so that gives you how much you're producing in your target uh, when you expose your target to an accelerator or eventually to a nuclear reactor. And uh, the second element is that the more target material or target nuclei you have, of course, the more you produce. So it's not only intensity, but the quantity that you have in your target. And this will, of course, depend on the quantity you can buy. If you have a cheap material and an easy material to process, you can have gram quantities. But now, if you have an enriched material or an uranium material, of course, the quantity is maybe more problematic to process. And then uh, you will not be able to produce uh, all quantities at all frequencies possible. And so this uh, two terms, both the reaction process with the incoming particle beam and the target will tell you how much you have produced in the target and after you will need to release, I have mentioned, um, uh, uh, to make this mass purification. So you can see that uh, if you don't do this mass uh, purification, eventually you will be able to uh, label a molecule. So these molecules are not labeled in this process. So what you would be doing, you would be collecting the isotope in small folds and will be implanted, for instance, in a, in a metallic coating on the gold foils. And after uh, the um, uh, radiochemist and the radiopharmacist in the biomedical hospital and institute will be able to dissolve and to synthesize uh, this uh, uh, small uh, radiopharmaceutical uh, molecules that after you inject and you can be then directed to cancer cells. And if you molecules then do not bind only radionuclides, but stable nuclides or other nuclides, you can imagine that you don't get the effect that you're looking for. So now, if you are able to do this mass separation process, you eventually are able to separate out the radioactive isotopes from the bulk uh, target uh, or the bulk, uh, if you want, uh, uh, cold atoms, which was in the target. And in this case, then you can uh, uh, raise the uh, quantity of active molecules that you want to use. And you can then eventually have 100% in an ideal case of your, radio your radioactive molecules. So the mass separation can increase the specific activity, the number of molecules which are really useful for imaging or for treatment, and of course their purity and both properties are important to eventually have efficient uh, and new treatment. So how can you do that in a, in a real facility? Uh, you can irradiate targets uh, at accelerators. And here, for instance, this is a, a cyclotron and a, a high uh, uh, power and high energy uh, cyclotron, uh, which can be, for instance, uh, hosted in a, in a, in a research institutes uh, like uh, Aronax in France or, or the Paul Scher Institute in, in, uh, in Switzerland. Um, and uh, if you are not interacting uh, a particle beam with the uh, um, uh, with a target, but rather wants to use some other particles like neutrons, this can very conveniently, of course, be done in a research uh, reactor uh, like uh, Institut La Hollande in Grenoble, or uh, the research reactor of uh, the uh, Belgium. Center for Nuclear Research in, uh, in MOL. And uh, in this case, of course, then you would need to transport the target and to transfer those in a mass separation facility so that you can then make this, uh, this mass separation. So the, the quantity you ultimately can do will depend very much on the, as I mentioned, the, the target dimension, the time of irradiation, and the typical particle flux being either the charged particles like proton beam or the simply the neutron flux in the a, in a nuclear reactors. And this will allow you to either cover more uh, treatment isotopes, uh, mostly by capturing neutrons or eventually 
uh, uh, diagnostic isotopes were uh, mostly accelerator I used. And as I mentioned, the combination then of uh, mass separation and eventually uh, would allow you to translate and to provide new types of radionuclides for this field of uh, either diagnostics or, or treatment. Uh, at CERN, uh, we have a dedicated uh, facility, which is called Medicis, which is attached to ISOL, which is then, you see, in operation uh, uh, for uh, some time, uh, which uh, then is exploiting this mass separation capacity by uh, uh, receiving about 50% of all the protons which are generated and used eventually in the rest of all the complex here uh, going from the booster to the PS, SPS and LHC for early fundamental research. Uh, and in medicines, we can exploit the proton beam, which is otherwise then uh, lost in a beam dump <coughs> because it's then uh, not uh, used anymore for the ISO facility. <coughs> in, the, in the extending this concept of combining uh, cyclotron nuclear research reactors and isotope mass separation facility then we had the proposal to create a consortium this is this prismap for uh, 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 providing medical radionuclides for for research in uh, biomedical research in uh, in europe uh, and uh, we have a consortium which is uh, combining uh, these facilities i already mentioned some of those right uh, like the the research reactor at the uh, Belgium uh, Nuclear Center in, uh, in, in Belgium or um, uh, this uh, cyclotron uh, accelerator in Switzerland. And uh, of course, then this mass separation facility at CERN, which is located in Geneva here. But you see here actually a consortium, which is then including many more partners. They can operate then uh, either uh, reactors or, or, um, or uh, accelerators uh, and eventually some of uh, these uh, research institutes then can as well uh, receive and make radiochemical purification of this uh, radionuclides. So what, what is then the added value or what uh, is the uh, possibility offered by this PRISMAP uh, program? So actually, uh, some of these radionuclides are very difficult to access because uh, either is they are not even available in the right grade in a single facility. And I can take an example, for instance, with uh, uh, 169 uh, uh, erbium and here you have a, a data sheet of uh, uh, this 169 erbium that you can access from uh, our website directly and uh, this uh, uh, isotope is produced in a, in a, um, uh, in a nuclear reactor but uh, it's produced by uh, 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 capture of the neutron on uh, this uh, erbium-168 uh, radio, uh, not uh, stable uh, nuclei, and then you generate a fraction which is then uh, active and which is actually a, a treatment uh, isotope. So it's not used at present for cancer treatment, it's just used for joint arthrosis as direct injection of a very diluted form uh, so that you can have pain relief in a joint arthritis. So you see it's a, it's a very niche type of application. But now if you combine that with isotope mass separation, we can have very uh, enriched and active erbium-169. And uh, as you uh, uh, would be able to pick out from my previous uh, part of the presentation, then that can be then labeled and used with a, a small pharmaceutical compound and then be directed instead of having a pain relief uh, property then really to have enough radiation to concentrate and to really kill a uh, cancer cell if you can direct this 169 erbium to uh, localized uh, cancer tissues and then prevent any side effect as you would not have accumulation of this radioactivity in, uh, in uh, parts of the body you wouldn't like. So this PRISMAP consortium that you see is is actually offering a range of uh, different chemical elements, but most of the time uh, combining diagnostics and treatment isotopes uh, for different uh, chemical elements, which then can have different half-life, different emission capability, like emitting an alpha 
or emitting a beta particle or emitting a, a positron which then can be used in this positron emission tomography in this terranostic approach, combining diagnostics and interacting. So what is the, the promises of, uh, of uh, mass separation and a consortium like PRISMAP is that we have seen that there is a, a, a strong uh, activity and increase of activity uh, uh, in terms of research and having new compounds tested and eventually developed for treatment of different forms of cancers. And uh, uh, here, this is already two marketed, if you want, uh, drugs or even three marketed drugs where um, uh, they have uh, really provided uh, strong advantages with respect to what was existing before, as I mentioned. Okay, um, uh, so we, we see then uh, that uh, uh, this, uh, this field of, um, of uh, uh, development of uh, radiopharmaceuticals has seen uh, existing drugs, uh, which we are providing uh, already added and strong added value um, with respect to what was used before, either as surgery, chemotherapy, or external radiotherapy. And uh, we see here that uh, there are already different types of radionuclides which can be used, either as emitting an alpha uh, particle for, for pain relief in this simple chloride uh, form of a, of a radiopharmaceutical. But then if you combine that with a bit more sophisticated uh, molecule, then you can eventually target, uh, uh, in that case, neuroendocrine uh, cancer with a, with a, um, a radionuclide which then can emit this beta particle. And here in that case, and this is showing how then PRISMAP could eventually, or uh, is already able to bring a uh, new result in this field, is that there was a, a compound which was used again for uh, uh, distributed cancers and metastasis in bones. Uh, and uh, because this 153 samarium, as uh, explained before, with 169 erbium is actually in a very diluted form and has low specific activity, the fact that we can make isotope mass separation, then we were able to uh, synthesize uh, radiopharmaceutical. Here is an antibody uh, uh, fragment, but uh, could eventually be used with other peptides or, or sugar analogs to retarget uh, cancers and their first uh, research results, uh, which have been produced uh, uh, already, which is showing that we can make such synthesis of high specific activity, uh, radio pharmaceutical, which eventually uh, could take over from eventually other treatments, which were maybe not so efficient uh, for the reasons I've explained of, um, of a lack eventually of appropriate uh, activity or appropriate properties of the uh, radionuclides that we are using. So you could uh, ask uh, yourself, so a project like PRISMAP and mass separation, I mean, uh, what is the, the, in which part of research and uh, radio or let's say treatments or, or diagnostic against cancer, it could be used. And uh, actually we, we will be developing the, the projects actually received by a research group across Europe, uh, which are expected to simply uh, um, uh, contribute in either uh, different type of imaging or be able to eventually uh, do imaging, which was uh, yet impossible because as I mentioned, maybe not the availability of the proper radionuclides or in treatment, but simply uh, as well because of mass separation and, uh, and looking at eventually how the isotope is decaying can provide new grades, which then provide benefits or um, uh, as a third approach, we could well imagine to have different type of combination of imaging technologies, combination, for instance, of uh, um, uh, scintigraphy, I mean, uh, single photo emission tomography, so-called SPECT imaging, that you could well ima uh, combine with a proper uh, nuclear probe with a magnetic resonance imaging. So the, the you have seen 
the different radionuclides which can be uh, offered and their chemical properties, their half-life of decay and the type of emission will indeed direct a possible research project in this either diagnostics or therapeutic uh, field uh, in the future for, for new treatment. So there is a need already identified and uh, uh, if I only take the example of uh, so-called targeted alpha therapy, so this approach of using radionuclides emitting an alpha particle, <clears throat> we have actually a few uh, which are uh, uh, possible. Uh, there is only uh, one which is remarketed, uh, uh, and this is this 223 radium uh, chloride. There is one which has passed uh, advanced clinical phases. This is this 225 actinium. And you see that there is a number of other which are the research stage. And we see, for instance, uh, Tabium-149, or uh, statin 211, which are already part of the Prisma portfolio, and you see then how to supply this new radionuclides can um, lead to, um, to uh, a new treatment, uh, which is in high demand, as for instance uh, described in this, um, in this uh, recent review uh, in, uh, published in last July in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine. So this I uh, I will then uh, uh, conclude with uh, with this. So this uh, consortium Prisma has uh, started um, uh, last year. It uh, will be lasting for a few more years. You can have more information on the uh, Prisma.eu. Uh, there is many people in the back uh, uh, which are involved in this uh, in this consortium. Uh, and uh, with that, I thank you. And I think, Victoria, we may have eventually uh, uh, questions or comments, right, which, uh, which came during the presentation. Uh, thank you, Thierry, for a very interesting talk, very exciting project. So now we have a couple of questions that we picked out from our social media. So first to start with, is the current infrastructure enough to support the, project, the projected future demand? For those radionuclides. So we I, uh, just highlighted uh, indeed uh, the present consortium and the, the need uh, uh, that is in this uh, in this field and uh, of course depends uh, if you will be asking uh, researchers or economists uh, but uh, uh, if I take a loan uh, the um, uh, one uh, new or, or uh, emerging uh, alpha emitters, this is 225 actinium, uh, it was already uh, included in my first slide where I showed this very fast growing uh, market, expected market uh, for new radiopharmaceutical uh, for cancer treatment. And if I take 225 actinium alone, so at Medicis, we'll have a capacity to produce that. There will be, as well, other places which can be produced. Uh, the Karlsruhe, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission can produce some, but we are uh, maybe meeting only at the person level what will be probably needed in the coming 10 years. So indeed, there will be a need of having even new facilities which can provide this uh, emerging uh, and very important uh, radionuclides because very efficient in very uh, specific types of cancers. Okay, um, but so you, you mentioned a few other facilities in Europe. Where else in the world is this being done? So actually, uh, um, so in, in uh, Europe, we are making this uh, Prisma pro program to really coordinate the efforts of uh, major installation. I mentioned nuclear reactors. Uh, major cyclotron facilities and an isotope mass separation. So in in uh, in uh, Europe itself, so we will have, for instance, new isotope separation facility which will come online, uh, like in Italy, uh, close to Venice in Padova, with the the INFN and the space facility. Or we'll have as well, for instance, a new research reactor in uh, in France, in south of France, in Cadarache. But uh, um, uh, Um, 
high power, high energy accelerators, and eventually um, uh, reactors. Uh, and this is in the US, in North America. And in terms of isotope mass separation, it's not fully dedicated to medical research, but we have, for instance, our Canadian colleagues uh, which are looking into this direction. Okay, thank you. Um, so now moving more towards the science, we have a couple of questions. First, are there other applications for the radionuclides that Prismas, Prisma will produce besides the medicine? So we are uh, mostly uh, uh, dedicated to uh, medical application. This requires a certain uh, combination of expertise uh, for having a certain modes of purification, not only mass purification, but having uh, a proper biological purity. Uh, but uh, actually, this uh, radionuclides, they can be used in uh, fundamental research, and they are already used in fundamental research in major facilities. And this is then uh, useful in, uh, in nuclear physics or, or solid state physics. So in, uh, it can be used as probe uh, of certain uh, crystalline structures, for instance, in, in solids and semiconductors. Um, and uh, actually, uh, there was uh, previous Nobel Prizes, uh, uh, Professor Evesi, uh, which uh, got his Nobel Prizes as using these radionuclides uh, or some radionuclides as tracers to trace, for instance, biological process or ge geological processes. So uh, they could well be then uh, used in other type of, uh, of uh, scientific domains, as I mentioned, can be biology, can be um, geology, etc. Okay, very interesting. Um, talking about mass separation, there is a question on how do you prevent the isotope destruction in the mass separation process? Yeah, so that's a, a very good question. So, so actually this, this mass separation process, you have uh, uh, seen that it uh, uh, combines uh, diffusion uh, properties, evaporation, eventually chemical interaction with the structural materials. And all these different processes can be very fast if you have a very volatile uh, compound molecule or can be rather slow. Uh, and you can normally speed up this with temperature and appropriate processes. But uh, you, depending on the half-life, I mean, the typical um, uh, uh, life that the, the isotopes would survive because before it would uh, decay, uh, you can have some uh, losses, uh, especially at the as well at the ionization stage, uh, and all these are specific scientific dis disciplines. This is uh, accelerator technologies and accelerator science, and uh, there is a, a scientific community which is uh, really looking into details on these different processes, so that you don't have losses of these very precious radionuclides which are produced in the target. Okay, very interesting. So now what makes a radionuclide a good candidate for nuclear medicine applications then? Talking about the characteristics. Right, so, so uh, of course you, are, you have seen that uh, um, there is possibility to combine uh, radionuclides or a, a single chemical element which can be used either as a photon uh, emitter as a positron emitter and then it has benefits in diagnostics and some other they can emit radiations like alpha or beta particles which then can have treatment benefits but this is by far not enough so then you have as well to consider as an ensemble the full uh, radiopharmaceutical its suitability for certain uh, 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 targeting properties uh, and uh, uh, is of course uh, uh, very premature to say that one or the other radionuclide will be useful and it will certainly be the case that different radionuclides will be used in different aspects uh, uh, because they have eventually one or the other properties which are better suited for us maybe a, a form of cancer where you need to re-internalize radionuclide in certain metabolic processes of the cell 
or you have certain other radionuclides which are maybe have a better stability in the complexing part of the of the molecule and uh, for sure um, uh, I, we expect that uh, not only one but certainly several of these radionuclides will find their way uh, into uh, new treatments because of uh, this uh, magic combination physical properties the biological properties and then the uh, And then diagnosis uh, with a patient. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think that will be it for questions. Um, so yeah, this is us want to close the seminar, and this was Prismap's webinar for the World Cancer Day 2022. And thank you for listening to us, and thank you Thierry for giving us a great presentation. Thank you, Victoria. Bye bye. Bye.